welcome to another episode of Tribune of the Grid, where we talk about all things Power Rangers, including the actors that play them. My name is Brandon. I am Lena. I'm Will. And today we have another episode for you. Now, today, you know, I know I always say, you know, we don't have much to talk about. So Mm -hmm. it shouldn't be that much long of an episode, but of course Mm -hmm. it always ends up being long. And (laughs) we like to talk. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) We like to talk. We like to run our mouths. And before you know it, it's like a two hour episode. So bear with us. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> bear with us please um but yeah so i promise you we we are not going to try to keep you long i promise we're not going to try to keep you too long but you know we do have some little things to talk about i mean we have of course our, we have our ranger things you know we have some of that you know we have we're going to be talking about power rangers dino fury this cute little poster that came out and there are some little things on there that was like hmm interesting we're also gonna be talking about some ranger news as far as like the super seven and we're gonna also be reviewing the new issues of mighty morphin and power rangers so continue to listen to us you know what i'm saying start out with um with some ranger things so you know what we got what we got absolutely so this week we don't have a lot we just have two lifetime movies i don't know what it is about lifetime movies but do they all feel like cliche and like slow and you already know the plot line before it even happens? And I feel like a lot of the times their trailer gives it all away. Like, do you guys get that same vibe? Yeah, all the, all the 10. I haven't <laughs> seen a Lifetime movie in years, but the ones that I remember, they were similar or at least like the storytelling was similar. Right? Oh yeah, they're, they're all, yeah, they're all pretty much the same movie. Mm-hmm. And, like, I don't know about, like, if you guys notice this, but it's almost like they use the exact same quality or, like, the same cameras or the same production team or whatever it is because they all look exactly the same. I was going to say the same actors, too, but... <laughs> yeah, the same actors do, but, but, but you and I both know that we're about to bring up two actors that aren't always in Lifetime movies. <laughs> Which is why I did not say same actors. But, yes... You are correct. They do use the same actress, <laughs> actors, more or less. For some strange reason, too, they seem to change their titles and they can't seem to figure out which one they like better. Because when you Google both of them, they both pull up. They both pulled up. Wow. Right? So the first movie I'm about to talk about is I'm surprised by how much views it got and how much comment this got. But there's a movie called Killer Competition. As, as I know it, and that's how I found out about it. It stars Jacqueline Hill. Oh, Jacqueline Hill. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Jacqueline Hill. Who is Jacqueline Hill? Jacqueline Hill is a YouTube makeup artist that's not relevant to this episode. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> oh Who is Jacqueline Hill? <laughs> <laughs> not jack <laughs> oh my god sorry guys we did not become a makeup tutorial <laughs> podcast not at all i promise you this but um jacqueline Solowski. so the movie killer competition is starring jacqueline Solowski, and it's obviously a lifetime movie it's about her who's trying to compete for valedictorian and she is against this one other kid that's like super smart in school. So her friend decided, you know what? Why don't we manipulate his test score? So that way you win and you get to be the Victorian to get into this one particular school that I guess only, they only accept like one from each town kind of a thing. So if there's two of them from the same school, you know, you know, like one of them ain't going to get it. And I guess Jacqueline's character, Nicole, felt like she wasn't going to get the position if she didn't do what she needed to do. However, by, by manipulating the test score, she was the prime suspect for all these random deaths that started happening at the school. Oh, wow. These students be dying now. And not just like <laughs> suicide, but they're definitely being hunted down. So it doesn't look good for Jacqueline's character, who, Nicole. And we find out later on in the trailer that the person who's sort of sort of in charge or sort of responsible 
for half of these killing is her friend who did suggest that Nicole manipulates the test score. We don't know if there's another plot twist in that, but this is according to the trailer. I have yet to not, I have yet to see it myself, mostly because I'm not a big fan of Lifetime movies at all. However, this particular title is also known as Top of the Class. So if you Google Killer Competition, Top of the Class also comes up. Or Top of the Class comes up and then Killer Competition. Either or, I feel like it can't decide. And if you watch the trailer, it actually also <laughs> says Top of the Class. So Killer Competition was probably the first name that they had. And then they just decided they were going to change it and go at Top of the Class at last minute. That's what it sounds like to me. Right? Like, very sketch. Suspicious. But... I mean, hey, it goes, in, it goes in theme with this whole movie, right? But yeah, no, it's very confusing. So if you guys are trying to look for it, that's probably why you may or may not be able to find it. And also, we have no idea how to find these Lifetime movies to watch, to be frank with you. We get a lot of comments asking where we can watch it. I have no idea. My only guess is somewhere on the Lifetime channel. Another Lifetime movie that I wanted to talk about is called The Wrong Fiancé. <laughs> the title is killing me. I'm sorry. The <laughs> what? <laughs> like the, that's the worst <laughs> title could possibly be. The wrong fiance. Like what? You couldn't think of a better name. <laughs> I'm sorry. Apparently and, not. Like apparently um, they just they they just were like you know what like. We're gonna be so on the nose with this title, um, because we need we need the people to know exactly what's going on in this right? movie. Like, don't 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 just watch it. We need to let you know exactly what's happening. Right, exactly. Right. So I'm sure you can tell by this lifetime title, "The Wrong Fiance," what the movie is possibly about. However, we don't really care what the movie is really about. The movie is only important to us and it's relevant to us. It's because Hillary Shepard place detective conley in it and she is mighty powerful in this particularly lifetime movie i do like her role in it i haven't seen it all but based on what did she did show us in her clip and what i did see in the trailer she's definitely the it woman of this movie forget the rest of the movie it's not that important i'm kidding the movie <laughs> wow <is> <laughs> <laughs> the movie is about photographer Abby. Wow, photographer. Essentially a woman between jobs. It's just a polite way of saying she's unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. So, you know, so we have, you know, photographer Abby. She's sent out of town on a job assistant by her editor, Charlotte. She thinks it is a perfect opportunity to escape her nightmarish ex-fiance Richard. However, Abby quickly discovered that it is impossible to elude him. Oh my, oh my. It's impossible. This seems like a, a plot that I've seen a lot before. Right! That's what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, they're making all these, especially these Lifetime movies, all very typical, very, you know what's going to happen. And I'm sorry, but... In order for anyone to find out where you are nowadays, it's all through social media. So if you haven't told anyone, you're great. What she if probably you probably ain't good with social media. Exactly. Oh, look <laughs> at this tree. Oh, look at this cafe. Oh, look at my new life. Oh, come find me. Come find me, please. <laughs> I was I actually, I was actually, um, <laughs> I thought it was cool that Vivica Fox is in there. There's only a certain amount of people who are listening that will actually know who that is. I'm about to say, Vivica Fox is so Black famous. Like, <laughs> I know. And you know what? She's in a lot of Lifetime movies. I've discovered she that. Is. that. She is. I only realized that because because uh, because I was doing the Christmas movie um, uploads. I was like, yo, she's in a lot of freaking movies. Mm. And they're always like romantic vibe kind of a thing. Um or she's always playing like the helper. Like in this particular movie, she's helping Abby find a new place. And oh, in the trailer, Abby's all like, Do you think he found me? And she's <laughs> like, Well, who would find you in the middle of nowhere? Well, bitch, ah. come on, I come in the middle of nowhere. If something was to happen to you, no one would know. Oh my God. Just saying. 
middle of nowhere is a perfect spot for you to be killed. How many times have we seen cabinet in the woods? Like where they just freaking die in the cabin in the woods. Oh, freaking, <laughs> freaking people, man. I hate to say this. It's mostly the white folks, too, that always ends up <laughs> in, <laughs> in the woods. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. And of course, oh, no. if you all can't guess, Abby's white. Just saying. I'm not, I'm not hating on her. <laughs> but you figure she'd be smart, but she's not. Jesus. <laughs> That's a trope. You know? It's, it's such a trope. And I, I guarantee you, like, and then there's always the friend or the helper that dies. Right? And it's just a coincidence Lord, that she's she black. About is she about to die? To say, she, and, and of course, the Viga Fox, the Viga. Oh, shit. <laughs> I, I'll get it right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get it right. Damn, even when Vivica? Vivica could, <laughs> yeah, even when she could like pr- uh, protect herself and kill Bill, she still died. Uh, yeah, she still died, and she was yep. the first one too. Of the opening of the movie. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Ugh. Yep. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It didn't even like, and she wasn't even killed in that order. Technically, they just decided to use that scene first. But that was an awesome fight scene. That's probably why. Oh, it was a great fight scene. I mean, she really gave Beatrix a run for her money. But still, it's just like, yeah. you had to be shown being killed first, though. <laughs> like, you had to go first. Really? Really? Mm. Ugh. I'm telling you. Ugh. But that concludes my two terrible plot Lifetime movies. <laughs> Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> wow. Well, um, well, with that, well, that concludes Ranger Things I, for, for Lena. So oh, we're yeah. just gonna go right into you know Ranger News, Ranger Talk. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we have some little some little gems that popped up, you know, this past this past week. Um, so one of the little things that popped up was there was a brand new poster. Um Brand new little poster that popped up for Dino Fury. Um, now, at the A Games Ten on Twitter, found this little gem, and he posted it on on his on his little page on Twitter. So if you follow, if you on Twitter, go ahead and follow him. Um, and yeah, you'll see you know you'll see the picture, or you can just also just look on our page because we posted it there too. But yeah, uh, <laughs> so there's this little nice little picture that feature all five rangers and it is definitely not Ryu Soldier. (laughs) It is not Ryu Soldier. Um, And uh, I I just find some very interesting things on this, on this here poster. Now, of course we see, you know, we see the rangers, but we mainly see, you know, like red, blue, and pink are like front and center. You know, like, they're, like, pretty, like, pretty prevalent. Like, they're very, you know, focused. And you have green and black just kind of, like, in the background, singing in the background. You know, kind of like, all right, you know, we just here. Um, One of the things I noticed about this is, first of all, Red looks like he's wearing a bodysuit. Does that kind of look like like that to y'all? What do you mean? Looks like he's wearing a bodysuit, like a um, like a muscle suit. Oh, oh, you think? Because I mean, it looks to... like it looks like um, looking at or some blue... shoulder pads. <laughs> oh wow, maybe looking at blue blues looks like that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess all maybe if they raise their arm, they all will, will the shoulders will all look like that. No, if you look closely, all of them are like that. Yeah, the gray, it does. It looks like it's a. It might. It may be a different material than the rest of the suit. Maybe. Well, the girls don't. When I'm looking at the girls. They don't. They're not. Their shoulders aren't like that. Because looking at the girls, their shoulders are pretty rounded, and the guys kind of have that little like, looking like they wear like, shoulder like pads. Like a shoulder. If you yeah, look yeah, closely yeah. at the green where she uh, bends her left arm, it does look kind of like that. That hmm. looks round to me. I'm looking it at it. Like, looks like a real pronounced, um, like arch. Maybe not arch, but like a corner situation, like a square, squaring. Yeah. Of the shoulder. I don't know. But the green one. The green one. It looks like it's a wrinkle. 
Right. That's what I, the, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah. Compared to the boys. Yeah, it looked more like it's it's just like she's bending and it's just like the wrinkle in the suit more so than like the guys that look like they're just wearing shoulder pads. You know what? The the um the material it's reminding me of um like the American footage of like Dino Charge. And and, and mm, to think about mm-hmm. it, also like samurai. Like it looks like whatever they've been using to make those suits for the last however long, the American version. So it looks like that to me. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, I, I I can see that. I can see that. Like it's like that. Like I forget what kind of material it's called. I think it's like two ply or something like that. Mm, like it's not like the two ply spandex. It's, it's definitely not the, not the spandex, the shiny stuff they use in Japan, or or even that we've no. seen in in some of the old American footage. Right, 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 right. That's true. Yeah, I'm I'm it's just, just like hmm, interesting this is look. interesting. It's very interesting. I was like, okay, okay. And also Pink's um, double looks a... I don't know if this is just like a male stunty just for the picture, but she looks a little she looks a little masculine. I was like, oh, okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Probably. But, I, but I'm pretty sure though, because from my understanding, just by looking at the... Um, looking at the uh, um, Hunter stories, apparently her double is supposed to be a Japanese woman. So maybe it's just for this picture that, you know, the, the person wearing pink, maybe just, you know, maybe just a male just for the picture. Um, but that's interesting. And also too, the other thing that everybody seems to notice is Black's sword in the back. So if you look closely at the sword in the back, it looks almost like it's either like photoshopped and edited wrong or it could probably be a t- completely different weapon than what we're used to it looks like it looks it looks like a dagger versus mm-hmm. like the sword that everyone else has so it word that dead. everybody's yeah like the basically the word on the street that everybody's like oh what's going on is like uh they may be you know they may have daggers that may become the sword or something like that. That's that's what pe- some people are thinking. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think it might be just like a, a editing mistake, <laughs> or is would, it actually? Could it be actually a, a brand new weapon? I would think that if it's in this um, in this promotional photo, it would be accurate to what we'll see in the show. So I guess it's, it's, I think it's possible that it could be like a new exclusive weapon for him in the um in the uh in the American foot when they have the American footage or mm-hmm. it could even be um maybe something that everybody uses if they don't have you know weapons unique to them kind of like the um the trans daggers in uh mm. in Lost Galaxy mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or the or the rescue bird weapons in uh Lightspeed right right yeah, I was honestly like I was thinking more so on the lines of what you were saying uh, the first time, where it's like they just have like American exclusive weapons because I mean that's basically what happened with um, with Beast Morphers. Like Devin had so many <laughs> American exclusive weapons, <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, every time you turn around, it was Cheetah this, Cheetah that, Cheetah Blaster, Cheetah Claws. I mean, he had he had everything Cheetah. Um, so you know. It wouldn't surprise me if they decided to make brand new weapons for this. And also, if you look at the toys, the toys also come with brand new special weapons as well. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it could stand a reason that, shoot, they might create their own brand new stuff and, you know, give them their own little thing. Because in the Japanese version, all they really have is their sword. Like their swords is primarily their own special weapons. And until that's kind of that's kind of boring for um for for selling toys. So right, exactly, sense. exactly. Like it's kind of boring, and you know, of course, it's like with Power Rangers. You know, Power it's Rangers a toy is used, commercial. It's a toy commercial. Like we're used to seeing everybody have mad weapons. So 
it would stand a reason. It's like, all right, you know, kind of give them more, you know, kind of make them have more things to use. So that's what I'm just like, I think they probably, I think it's probably a brand new weapon. I think. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going around around on the interwebs as of right now with this little piece of poster, honey. Um, now, also some news that popped up a couple days ago is Super 7. So, some of you, now pretty much a lot of y'all probably already know what Super 7 is because, I mean, it's probably done went around the internet. You probably done read about it. But we're going to talk about it anyway. <laughs> Because it's new, right? So we, probably, by, probably by the time this comes out, y'all probably know, but whatever. Um, so basically, reading a little excerpt from, from the article, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers is coming to Super 7 in a big way in 2021. In collaboration with Hasbro, that includes Reaction, Ultimates, and Super Cyborg figures. The line will kick off with a Super Cyborg Megazord action figure this spring, along with a capsule collection highlighting various categories such as apparel and accessories. Standing at 11 inches tall with multiple articulation points, Super Super Cyborg figures feature a removable torso panel to reveal the robot inside. The Super Cyborg robot will be followed by the first wave of Power Rangers 3 3- 0.75 inch reaction figures, including the Red Ranger, Green Ranger, Rita Repulsa, Pudgy Pig, Putty Patrol, and Megazord. Also, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers will also be hitting the Ultimates line this year with the Yellow Ranger, Green Ranger, Goldar, Tyrannosaurus, Dinosaurus, and Putty Patroller in the first wave. So, thoughts. What do you guys think about this little bit of information? Um, it's, it's, oh, oh. Gives us well, something to look forward to. I what did you say? <laughs> what did you, you say, Lena? I said it's exciting. It's give is giving us something to look forward to. But Will sounds so sad, and depressed about it. <laughs> yeah. So I can I can see that. Like this is pretty cool because it's um, you know, it's a new brand. Well, not well, a new brand for Power Rangers that gives Power Rangers more you know, eyeballs on to them to let people know that they're still alive. However, Mm -hmm. they're still using Mighty Morphin, which makes Mm. absolute sense. But damn, that is like, it's not the only classic series that they have. And I wonder, like, is there a way to, at this point, is there a way to make the classic series um like zeo turbo in space lost galaxy blah 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 blah. is there a way to make that have any sort of relevance obviously not as important or as memorable at, or as nostalgic as mighty morphin because that's the original but i wonder if there's any way of if they tried to push one of those seasons mm-hmm. you know, how can we start paying attention to them and paying homage to them because it would be nice to see those characters remembered as well because those those characters made for some great moments like to have them push jen like that would be cool but uh, i mean like it's it'll be cool to see what these look like i actually i wasn't familiar with the the brand super seven right Mm-hmm. I wasn't I wasn't familiar with the before this. Um, I visited a friend earlier and he showed me some of um, the collect the collectibles he has. He has like Ninja Turtles, and two of the the figures that they mentioned. Um, he had like two version two two toys from those lines. So one of them is a really small one. Okay, it's like three inches. And then the mm-hmm. other one is like a larger one, maybe like between six and eight, eight. kind of like some of the, mm, I guess actually the newer figures aren't, aren't that large actually, like the regular line. Right. Um, so like they're a little bit bigger, they have more articulation. Um, and then there's, there's actually, you know what, there's one that is going to be the same size as I believe it's going to be the same size as like the main line of, um, for the Dino Charge toys. It doesn't have as much articulation. 
So, like, it'll from just looking at the Ninja Turtles, those look cool. So, I'm sure the Power Rangers are going to look cool. And then, like, the Megazord, I wonder what that's going to look like. Because I'm assuming with the, the little extra in the name, it's not going to be just a normal Dino Megazord. Like, it'll no. be it'll be based off of it, but have, um, you know, some, some, you know, customizations. Is, is that the one that, um, there was a picture that was released maybe last week of a Megazord, but it was like a special version of the original Megazord. Was that it? Uh, I, uh, which one are you talking about? It looked, so it, it was the original Megazord, but it looked like, it was put through a machine and like it was uh Michael Bay like he just had his way with it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Like is it cuz like I think I know what you're talking about but then I'm like I don't because like I'm like cuz if you if you if you're referring to what I think you're talking about what well, I think you're else? talking about is uh, um it's, it's it was an unreleased Megazord okay, that Bandai okay. created. Yeah, oh. it was like a design that they okay, created. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Okay, all right. Yeah, because Bandai years ago when they were doing um, Ju 2 footage, they designed no, several not that versions one. of the Megazord. Not that one. I know exactly what you're talking about. Not that one. It looked okay. So damn. I don't know. So they did. Yeah. <laughs> so they released like we saw a couple of things like leaked or released in the last week. So nah, the one that I know what you're talking about. The one that I'm talking about. It literally looked just like the original Megazord, but there were, um, you know, like certain parts of it were popped out. It was shaped a little bit differently. It looked like, it, maybe it was a custom that somebody made. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I know I what you're no talking, about, you're talking about. It's, <laughs> not, it's, it's not that one. I'll, I'll see if I can find something. I'll put it in the group chat, but okay because yeah I, I don't know uh, <laughs> i'm sorry i can't help you i don't know uh but yeah i i guess for me i'm i'm kind of the same way with you in a sense like i was kind of going through the toys and going through you know um the looks of them and everything and i'm like hmm, this isn't bad like i i mean like i'm loving the looks like i'm i'm, I'm like i like what they're giving um as far as like the toys that were you know already there with super seven and you know the types the, like the way they look and how they're designed and their articulation and everything i'm like okay cool and like the other brands that they mentioned um i was like okay cool like i'm i'm okay with this like this is cool but i'm also like you in a sense of like we're back at Mighty Morphin again. Like, I mean, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I understand that Mighty Morphin is the bread and butter of like all that is Power Rangers. I get it. Like, I completely understand. I understand that Mighty Morphin is, is the big cheese, but can you also like sprinkle in like maybe, you know, some, tur some not turbo, Jesus Christ, but like in space. I mean, why or... not turbo? Some people remember that it had a movie. They remember it, but it's not a popular season. That's why I had to be to like, I had to recant it. Yeah, to, to the, the fandom, fandom, it's not. But there yeah. could be other people that, because I feel like they're they're going back to the Mighty Morphin well because the mainstream, not just the fandom. But so that's like, the thing. But that's the me, thing. That's that's what it is. That's the, mm. that's that's what makes the money is the right. mainstream and the fandom. Like that's what makes money. You know, like they like. People don't know, well, not know, but like for the most part, people don't remember. Uh, uh, they definitely remember Turbo. Um, you I might mean, have people movie, remember Space, though. but that movie flopped. Like you don't think that like people, that people remember that one? No, people remember Mighty Morphin Power Rangers the movie before they remember Turbo Power Rangers movie. Like hey, that's I, what, but that, I, oh, obvious, I, obviously, obviously, yeah. But I'm, like, what I'm saying is. For seasons that came after that would be recognizable I would think that in the earlier years like still part of the Zordon era from season what four to six that would be something that some of those fans will remember I mean if you 
I, I, I still disagree because when you think about it, like say for example, when they were doing the Battle of the Grid um, sets or whatever, when they was doing they were doing that whole Kickstarter, why do you mm-hmm. think they went from Zio and then they skipped Turbo and went straight to In Space? Because they knew that like fans would, those are the things that people remember. Like fans remember, p- fans will pay for you know Zio because of course you still had basically the original cast. You know, and it was still, and it was still something that was still very close to Mighty Morphin to the original era, and they jumped in space mainly because of how epic it was with like the Psycho Rangers and all of that. But Turbo was kind of like a gateway season in a sense, where it just kind of connected. It was kind of like a chain link in the middle of like a belt, where it's just kind of like eh, it just connected things, but it wasn't really something that was like oh yeah, this is like a standout breakout season. It wasn't. Like, it was just kind of like, this is something to get us from point A to point B. But everything in between it, like the two things on the outside was the most important. Like, Mm -hmm. that's really kind of what Turbo was in a sense. Granted, like Turbo for a lot of people was actually a decent season. For me, I, I thoroughly enjoyed Turbo, especially the second half. But for the for most of the fandom, a lot of people didn't like Turbo. Mainly because of Justin. A lot of people fell off. So it was just like, mm. and then of course, when the original cast members left, people definitely fell off then. So it was just kind of like, mm. Mm, yeah, Turbo is not really a season that is like a fan, fan, fan favorite in comparison to like an In Space or comparison mm. to like a Zio. It's not a fan favorite. So it's like, what are we, are we going to bet our coins on just, you know, doing things in order, or are we going to bet our coins on like, on knowing exactly what fans like? They're going to go with that, no matter how popular it is. And of course, it's always going to be with Mighty Morphin, always. But my thing is, I'm like, I would much rather see something like a Zeo or at least an In Space or something out of the order, out of just like the realm of just Mighty Morphin all the time. Like, if we can get you know, one character, if we can get an Andros or, you know, something or get an Ecliptor or get the Gold Ranger, something, just just something from a different season rather than just Mighty Morphin, Mighty Morphin, Mighty Morphin, Mighty Morphin, then I'd be happy with that. But they're not going to do it. So it's just like, well, what can you do? That's my only issue. I mean, at... At some point, of course, maybe some other people might bust out with something. Oh, okay. So Will just shared with us uh, the picture um, that he saw. So, okay. Okay. I saw this. I don't know what the context was, but I saw this. Mm. Okay. 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 Anyway. Um, yes, 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 yes. This is actually a bomb ass Megazord though. Like this is, this is nice. Like if they were to do something like that, like I'd probably pick this up because this looks bomb, but I don't know. I don't know. Did you, did you, did you, did you, did you um, find out what the, what the context was or did you just find the picture? I just found the picture. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't Not know helpful. if it's I know, Not right? Helpful. I don't know if this is a um like a concept art that somebody just created or what. But it mm. looks like that's really cool. It look it looks like the original, almost exactly like the original Megazord, but the pterodactyl's wings are showing in the back and the uh the chest plate actually it's actually teeth it looks like a mouth that's closed it's a bit bulky i'll put it in our story thank you yes please do because i'm sure the people are gonna be like what the devil are they talking about yes (laughs) (laughs) they're gonna be like what the heck are they talking about um but yes so i i think super seven i i think i think it'll be a, a cool addition i think um but yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see what we'll see what happens. We'll see. Um, now on, on to these comics, though. These comics. So 
which one you want to start off with? You want to start off with Mighty Morphin, or do you want to start off with Power Rangers? Oh, um, Mighty Morphin since it came out first. Okay, all right. So, go ahead, Will. Tell us, tell us what Mighty Morphin was on. Give give us the tea. What was Mighty Morphin about this time? Issue number three. Number three. Okay, so uh, we're following the the formula that they started in the first one going with uh, Zordon 10,000 years ago. And um, mm-hmm. he's, we see two people, um, two aliens on, on a planet. They're like uh, walking through a market, an outdoor market. And one of them is really, um, it seems like they're insecure. Yeah, they're insecure about the way that they look um fast forward to the next page and we see that it was actually um it's actually zordon undercover with what's his name zartus and Mm -hmm. the idea that um i believe it was Zartus had uh of going to other planets to help them out and to um uh, make a connection so that they can protect themselves against evil forces. That plan is going, uh, they're seeing the plan through. So Zordon and Zartus are undercover, excuse me, are undercover and on this planet. Um, we find out a little bit about Zordon and that he had no desire to be a warrior and he he wanted a simple life on a farm with his family. Um, it's a, <laughs> the the guy's artist. He's kind of um, disappointed in that. And we find out also that um, Zordon's not really there by choice. He's kind of was was forced into this mission. Um, he says that he's a. Uh, He's not a warrior. He's merely a servant. Uh, I mean, just disappointing poor Zartis because Zartis is like, look, like you are one of us. Like we need you to go ahead and get on this mission. You know what I'm saying? And Zordon just like, you know, I'm just going to just do this, you know, just do this until it's my time to settle down and start my little own family and work on work on my little farmland and all this stuff like a little shepherd boy i'm just like child that's not yeah. what your calling is yeah and he little said you know. and he even said um this is it's not going to be my life and yeah little did he know it actually would end up being his life okay yeah and then um we go to angel grove in the present and then we pick up where we left off last week where the rangers were surrounded by a shitload of the the super Z putties, and um, they're 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 holding their own. I was really surprised that um, they showed Kimberly firing her fire bow, her her power bow, and the arrows were like going through the the putties eye sockets. I was I was really surprised that they showed that. Um, Why not? I mean. The I mean, I guess be like doing things yeah, on a ten. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, what happened next? During the fight, um, Zed he temporarily kidnaps Adam. He temporarily kid, like really, it was so quick. And then, um, he put a little spell on him to where he sees his fellow rangers as animals they look or not animals as monsters they look um basically their helmets became like their face and their bodies um basically he just warped them into bite monsters so yeah, like, it was, instead it was, of them like looking like rangers they look like animal monster forms of their ranger forms yeah they it was it was similar to putty on the brain right right and um also, what else happened? The the uh, remember the Green Ranger? He was down there helping out, but he gets his ass handed to him. So Billy um, goes over to check on him, and then he tells um, 
he tells him to go back to Promethea um, and tell Grace that she needs to disrupt the chaotic entanglement and realign the, oh God, a bunch of Billy talk. So <laughs> Aisha is right near him when he says Getting this. all the she tea. hears everything. And we see the return of the Aisha scowl, but this time, I mean, well, you know what? It was, I was going to say this time it it's warranted, but it was warranted before. No, like but, it was all, her. Her scowls are always warranted. Like yeah, sis yeah. be seeing everything, and she be yeah. like, and she sees it and she calls it out. Like, <laughs> right, yo, this right. is a bull. Uh, uh-uh. uh, what's what's the tea? What's going on? Right. right but my right, gag right, right, was right, right. sis literally stopped fighting. Everybody else is still fighting these z putties and getting their asses handed to them, and she is just standing there getting all the tea. Like, hmm, <laughs> what you doing? Right. That's what got me. I'm like, sis just standing there. Like, she ain't moved not one time. I'm like, mm-hmm. girl, everybody mm-hmm. else fighting and you just sitting. <laughs> mm-hmm. I love it. I love you it. Know? <laughs> and as um, as the other Rangers are still fighting, Tommy gets shot in the back and we see that it's by Adam. And everybody... <laughs> It's it's interesting, like the um, the different reactions to it, because it wasn't like a oh my god, Adam, what are you doing? And um, it was <laughs> Adam or excuse me, Tommy. He asked who shot um, did one of you shoot me in the back? And then Kimberly was like, it's Adam. I don't think he's all good in the head though. Um, I guess well. Rocky gave the what are you doing? And then um, he just charges at them and we see that he sees everybody as monsters. So they're trying to figure out how to neutralize him. But once again, Aisha is like ahead of the game and she just roundhouse kicks him and knocks him out. So that <laughs> then they have to retreat because um, the, the putties are way too much so i mean aisha like one part about this is just like very interesting because aisha is just like tommy so you know permission to go ahead and handle this real Mm -hmm, fast mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. you know let me go ahead and handle this and he's like go do your thing now first of all now i don't i don't really hear tommy hear tommy saying do what you gotta do girl i don't really hear him saying that but that's Mm -hmm. just me uh, <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> um, but yeah, he was just like, do what you gotta do. And sis was just like, so I'm just gonna go ahead and politely like kick you in the back of the head. Um, which <laughs> I actually like high key, I loved it because I'm like, that's such an Aisha thing. Like this, like Aisha in this in this universe is like, I am going to handle everything. Like, just leave it to me. And I, I love that. I love just that like about a black her. woman. Just like a black woman. It's just like, leave it to me. I, I'll handle it. I'll save the whole world by myself if I got to. And it's just like, she just she just does it. And she does it so effortlessly. Like, I, I just love that about these comics and just how, and, I, and I've said this before, but I just love how these comics really do the Yellow Rangers because I really feel like they've mm-hmm. noticed that the Yellow Rangers get way too much like they get they're underserved yeah Yeah, they are underserved and they're so underutilized Mm -hmm. and they're just like yeah we're gonna make them be like the most badasses in this universe um but yeah yeah, go go right on ahead yeah so they retreat back to the command center um i believe rocky's asking i believe adam's going to be all right and um and uh yeah he said yeah um they're just going to take him to get checked out then tommy and kimberly are checking in with with zordon they find out that uh the well zordon informs them that they're powered by or they're laced with chaos energy and they're significantly more dangerous um alpha five he tracks um the uh what is it the transportation trajectory of the green ranger and it leads him to promethea and then we go to promethea um grace is talking to one of the one of her assistants as we see the gold or excuse me the uh, green ranger inside of a um what would you call that uh, it's like a, like a like a tube or something 
Yeah, I guess. Like, yeah, um, regenerating. We'll call it a regeneration too. We'll call it that. And um, as she's talking to um, her, Zordon just pops up. <laughs> His head just is floating in Promethea. And he basically threatens her. He says, uh, he, a- he asked her to give back the dragon coin or he'll have the rangers take it by force. And that is, that's, that's just real interesting. We've seen kind of a different side of Zordon lately, a, a more, I guess, a, authoritative side of him we've never really seen before. Um, Here, here's my thing. Here's my thing about 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 good old Zordon. Here, Zordon is throwing a whole lot of weight around mm-hmm. here to be a giant floating head. <laughs> what you gonna do without the about your Rangers? Like, bruh, you sitting in a tube. You can't do nothing. You sitting mm-hmm. here throwing around all this muscle. Like, oh, I'm gonna come after you. I'm gonna send all these people after you, and blah 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 blah. blah. It's like, bruh, like. First of all, your ranger team that you want to quote unquote send out after after Grace, they got their asses handed to them by by Z putties. Like mm-hmm. they ain't got time to be worrying about no green coin. They really don't. So it's mm-hmm. just like <laughs> you sitting here trying to throw your muscle around. It's like, dude, no, chill out. Like let Grace do what she gonna do. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, be like, all right, so you got the coin or whatever. I know you don't want to give it back, but, you know, I like, you know, let's work out a deal or something. Like, try to, like, do something. Because he know Grace, Grace just ain't going to just give it back. Like, that's not going to yeah. happen. Yeah. So it's just like, you sitting there trying to threaten her? Like, bruh, come on. Yeah, and she, um, she does not She's not sweating it at all. Um, what, did, what did she say? Um, she basically tells him, uh, when this is all over, you and I can discuss things. And, um, oh, God. And if you still feel like you need to send the Rangers, I wish them the best of luck. So I guess she, she means she's going to be ready for them. <laughs> Basically, she pulled. A, she pulled the bride when um when Beatrix killed killed um killed Vernita and killed Bill and Nakia saw it. She said, "You know what? Right. When you grow up and you still feel raw about it, I'll be waiting." So you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, all right. So <laughs> if your Rangers, if you still feel raw about it and you want to bring your Rangers to my crib, I'm ready for them. Mm-hmm. What's good? Like mm-hmm. I, I love Grace's energy. It's just like, okay, you talking all this, you talking all this yin gang. Okay, so when you bring your when you bring your goons, I'll be ready for them. Mm-hmm. What's good? Like I love it. I love it. Like mm-hmm. Zordon sitting here trying to push, trying to throw around his muscle like he's doing something. Boy. Yeah, and it's Grace it's, is and running this. Sit down. It's, re- <laughs> it's really interesting the way that Zordon is is acting now. Um, and I wonder if because on one hand, he feels like he's trying to keep the balance and he's trying to do it for the greater good. But well, I feel like it's kind of self-righteous. It's, it's kind of like like he has an inflated sense of uh, of self, the, the fact that he feels like he's the law like that. And I think that well, can be da- kind of dangerous. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. He, Zordon is is has always felt like he's in the position of being in control Mm -hmm. so and and basically having people follow his orders and do things and and exact things off of his control and off of his off of his leadership now if things are going haywire he's he it seems like he's not used to that like i mean what you would think he is but he should be but it almost kind of seems like at this point right here, he's in a posi- he's in he's in a different situation where it's like I don't have any kind of any kind of control, and mm-hmm. if I don't have control over this specific situation, then I'm going to try to do everything I can to try to gain control mm-hmm. under any means necessary. So it's almost it is very self righteous. 
It is. It's it's it's, it's, um, it's borderline basically controlling, in a mm-hmm. sense. Where it's just like he he notices he's losing his he's losing his power. He's losing his influence. And you know, you, he just literally had his ranger team, you know, his original ranger team come in and steal Draken from him. And you know he's still sore about that. And now you got a green ranger with a coin that was obviously taken from the command center. And he don't know how, like, you know, Grace gets it. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I am losing all sorts of control here. What is going on? So he's like literally floundering all over the place trying to gain control. Trying to gain control of the situation and trying to get everything back on track. And he is losing his mind. And I love it. I love it because that's not a Zord- that's not a side of Zordon that we ever saw in the TV show. We never saw Zordon ever be remotely human in a sense. He was just this all-knowing sage who had all the answers at the last minute. <laughs> right. Like that's literally what he was. And it's like now it's like okay, so you you have the, you're you're a person now like you're a character. So we're putting you in these circumstances. How would you react? And I definitely believe that Zordon would have reacted like this because it's like, bro, like, you don't know what you really don't know what you're doing. You really don't like you, you think you do, but you really don't. I'm really looking forward to seeing how he acts when he um, he realizes that Billy has been doing all the stuff behind his back. That's going to be now that now that I, I like. I know we're going to be skipping a scene, but I have to get straight to this. Like when Aisha confronts Billy, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that is probably the best scene out of the entire comic for me. It, it is literally the best scene because Aisha is literally holding all the power. She is holding all the cards mm-hmm. and she is like, baby, like, <laughs> first of all, so she she first of all she is standing on the wall like <laughs> she is confronting Billy like she just saw him cheating on her with with her coworker like she is just like yo so i saw you talking to the green ranger <laughs> and you then know, Billy tried to play it off right and she's like no i heard everything she was like i heard everything like my girls my girls got you on camera you know what I'm saying? Talking to the Green Ranger, they got you on camera. They, they got you. They got the whole. Rec- they got the whole conversation recorded. You know what I'm saying? Mm-mm, you can't trick me. I know everything. So what's good? Tell me what's up. And Billy's just kind of. He's still trying to play it off. She's like, you know, she's like, so fine. If you don't want to tell me what's up, I'll just go tell Zordon. <laughs> And he's like, no, 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 wait, wait, don't tell Zordon, please. He's like cowering. And this was like, don't do Aisha. Don't play her. Like, don't do her. And he's just like, I just figured out a way to recharge the coin. But, you know, it's not what you think and all this stuff. And she's just like, you've been lying to us the entire time and allowed us mm-hmm. to be freaked out and you knew exactly what was going on and you didn't tell a single person. And he's like, well, I just want to tell everybody on my terms. It's like, bruh, no, no. Like, you should have told everybody from the jump. Like, you should have told them, like, time, like, this Green Ranger popped up, like, yeah, so I kind of know what's going on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like... Yeah, it, 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 like it that should have been to, already talked about. Yeah, it just spiral. It got to a point where he was afraid, and then it just, you know, but he was thing, too afraid to to tell. Like um, the first time, so it just it kept going. So it's like the longer that it goes, it's like the worse it's going to be when they find out, or or so he thinks. Well, that's the thing, because the, the the thing is, it's like Billy was so Billy is one of those people who his mind is so inquisitive. And his and he just has a big heart for just wanting to help mm-hmm. to the point where it's just like he dug himself into a into a nasty hole that he just mm-hmm. could not get himself out of. Exactly. Because it was just a situation where it was like his his intellectual inquisitive nature got him into trouble. Because it was like, oh, I have to, he was he was so dead set on recharging the di- the, the dragon coin. And it was like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna fix this. And of course, with minds like him. He has to do it. Like he he has to do it and get it right. 
Like there is no, oh, maybe I'll get it right. Maybe, I, mm, you know what? I'm just gonna leave this project alone. No, I have to figure this out. So mm. he did the cardinal sin in this universe, go to grace. And we already mm. know what type of situation and what type of, you know, relationship that the Rangers have with Grace, he still has a relationship with her and that he never really told them about. Mm -hmm. He still has a relationship with her. So now, not only will he have to explain how the dragon coin got to Grace, but he also will have to explain his actual relationship with Grace, which he should have never had to begin with because of how Grace kind of, you know, got them in this situation anyway. Like her, her and Grace, like Grace and, and the Rangers, as far as like as a whole, they're not really on like great terms. Not with like, like Zordon and them. Like they're not really on like the best of terms. I mean, they are right, but they're not like buddy, buddy, buddy. Because if that were the case, Billy would have had no reason to, to keep it a secret. So it's just kind of like you, you playing with fire. You know, at this point, like you playing with fire. And not only that, now you got everybody like not really trusting you. Like they won't be able to trust you like that. So it's like you said, it's going to be very interesting when they actually find out like, yo, Billy, you knew about this? You did this? <laughs> it's going to yeah, be and, very interesting. And how is Zordon going to feel? Because uh, what is it? Four of his originals are doing things behind his back. So mm -hmm. how the hell is he gonna feel? He's gonna like he I'm telling do? you, okay? He's gonna feel so betrayed. Like I, I, I really, because like he's already feeling betrayed by Jason Sack and Trini. So the fact that Billy went behind his back and is doing this, oh, he's going to be hurt, hurt. Like you know what a gag me though? What if he actually be like? Give me my coin back. <laughs> mm. I mean, man, like, give like, me my that coin. Could, that could happen. That could happen. And then maybe it'll be a situation where the Rangers um, are like, if, if Billy's gone, we're gone. Right, right. Or it could be a situation they need, where they, they, well, need his, he, they need his intelligence. He's, he's a, is an integral part of the team. Right. Right, right. And yeah. and of course the friendship, you know. Well, that's the thing, because like think about it. If Bill Billy's been lying to all of them, pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, you got that you got that plus the simple fact that Tommy and Kimberly, especially Kimberly, like that's her road dog, like that's her ride or die. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And it's like, because she's known Billy the longest, aside from Tommy. She's mm -hmm. known him the longest. So it's like, yo, you've been, you lied to me? Yeah. Me? And, and, and you know, the thing with that is we also saw um, the different reactions that the Rangers had to what the Omega Rangers did. And Billy, well, I, I was going to talk about Billy's reaction, but Kimberly's reaction in particular is those are her friends and she believes that they did what they did for a reason and not to hurt anyone. So I'm thinking like she she believed that with um with Billy as well. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean maybe she would, but I don't know cuz this is also the same girl who had a whole lot of attitude with the new kids. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to like kind of prove themselves too. So I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe that might be the case, but I think was uh, to me, I feel like it's going to be a situation where it's going to be split down the middle in a sense where when they find out that Billy knew, like the newbies are still going to be kind of okay with Billy because they really don't know what to think. Because this is going to be kind of like a situation where they're just like, all right, whatever. I mean, he lied, but, you know, whatever. Like, I don't really know him like that. Versus, like, Tommy and Kimberly, who is like, yo, we we know you, for like, from the jump. Like, you know, we we had, we had shattering grids around this, around this mug with you. You know what I'm saying? 
and <laughs> we done been through all of this stuff and you lied to us like we would be the first we i feel like we would be the first pe- people you tell mm-hmm. you know um so i i don't know like i kind of feel like kimberly would just feel a lot more betrayed by billy only because of the fact that like yeah with the omega rangers it's like yeah they kind of did what they had to do because she understood the situation with you know with this other force or whatever coming and trying to destroy the galaxy so they tried to figure out okay so dragon was the only one who knew about it you know they did what they had to do but billy lied to us like straight up lied and didn't tell us nothing like and then try to like play off play it off like nothing ever happened like i kind of feel like that would probably sting kimberly a little more than just mm-hmm. kidnapping somebody <laughs> like i think that would probably sting kimberly a little more because that was that's like, like directly affecting them and tommy mm-hmm. and tommy as well because tommy is like zordon's little puppet right now so whatever zordon mm-hmm. says tommy is going to agree so I just kind of feel like those two are definitely going to be stung by what Billy did versus the other three versus Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. They're mm-hmm. just like, uh, whatever. I mean, that's just, that's my assumption. I don't know. Lord Zed basically makes the Z putties grow. The Rangers jet in action. I don't even know what they're doing. I'm, I think they're jetting. I don't know. They jet in action <laughs> and call their swords. Or they could be and jumping into them. Do. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh we forgot. We, we forgot to mention um, during this whole breakdown with Adam, or excuse me, with Aisha and, and Billy, Adam comes too, because they're talking right, right in front of his unconscious body. So who knows if he heard any of what they were saying? I doubt it. I doubt he heard it. Mm-hmm. I don't think he heard it. I think he. I think he woke up like just in time, like just like oh, oh god, uh, my aching head. Yeah, I don't think he heard it, I, but like I do think that Aisha is gonna hold his little secret just just for a little while, but or or it's gonna be a situation where they find out who the Green Ranger is, and they're gonna be like, uh, wait a minute, and then that's when Billy's gonna have to tell. Which I think that's going to be the next issue, to be honest. I think the Green Ranger is going to be discovered the next issue. Do you think so? I mean, isn't the cover of him taking his helmet off? I mean, I, I guess so. I mean, there's I variants so. out there of it. There's different variants. I mean, one of the variants it is. But, of course, also two comic books do that all the time. <laughs> I think I think I think it's about time. I mean, I hope so because I'm I'm like I want to find out who this Green Ranger is. Get it over with. Yeah, but this has been um, this has been fun. Like I I don't feel like it's I don't feel like they're they're uh, they're running too long with it. You know, like like it, it's interesting that we still don't know, but like everything else story wise, it's it's so interesting. Oh yeah, for sure. Like their storyline storyline wise, it's like it's amazing. Like it's it's a fantastic issue. Like Mighty Morphin is I, I like the fact that they split that they split up everything and they're still every they're still running the stories along with each other at the same time. Um I, I think Mighty Morphin is is great so far, but my favorite is definitely Power Rangers for sure. Like mm-hmm. Power Rangers is definitely my favorite, but Mighty Morphin is definitely kicking ass too. Mhm, mhm. I was a little bit. Um, I was a little bit worried because I feel like um, I'm really enjoying uh, Power Rangers more as well. So I was afraid, like, oh no, is Mighty Morphin not going to be as good? But even though I'm enjoying Power Rangers more, Mighty Morphin is still very good. And, and some, um, I love, love, love that they're developing the newbies. Or continuing to develop them, um, that really helps with the the because uh, we already know Tommy, Kimberly, and uh, Billy, but it feels like more of a complete team now compared to the end of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, where we were still, you know, we're trying to 
go through those growing pains. So right, definitely well, they have me wanting to see what's next, obviously. Now, speaking of Power Rangers, now this next issue shall issue three. Ooh, child. Like, oh, issue three for me. Now, I'm not going to lie. At the very beginning, I didn't need none of this. To be truthfully honest with you, I, did, I, I didn't need none of this. I, I didn't need it. I didn't need any of this stuff with, like, explaining who the, who the, um, the horrid, the, the, the horrid, the, I was about to say the whores, the horrid, the horrid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need none of this. I was like, I'm, yeah. Mm. So we got their backstory. I actually, I actually was a little bit confused at um, what this man was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like um, I mean basically but, in a nutshell they were their own little like group or whatever their own little race of people they got too big for their britches and wanted to try to discover new shit and basically self-destructed their own planet and, and basically almost killed their entire race but instead their race turned into vampires so Space vampires this, this is interesting because what they're talking about doing sounds like what the the alt alt altarians wanted to do or at least mm-hmm. that one that's interesting it, that there's a parallel there but with this parallel they got turned into space vampires right right and i'm just like eh, i didn't need none of this like i was just <laughs> like yeah whatever i mean unless like the horrid plays like specifically into the storyline in some intricate kind of way. I'm just like, eh, I, I really didn't need uh, need this background. I was just like, all right, whatever. Like, y'all could have started it off right where, you know, you had Draken basically acting like, yeah, so I'm going to set up the Rangers and, you know, bring their bring their um, their life force to you so you can suck them dry. Ooh, that came out wrong. Um, and <laughs> and um, and then I'll find you a planet that you know that you can just drain all their life force, and you know, yeah, you and your people never go hungry. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, of course, you got you know the other rangers still trying to you know get themselves together. Train Trini hanging out the um hanging out the side of the side of the ship. And um, Z basically goes ahead and save her. And it's like, girl, if you ever want to jump ship again like that, I'm going to leave your ass out there. That, yeah, that was, tickled me. <laughs> yeah, because it was it was like he he was being hard on her, but it was like tough love because obviously him saying that he cares about her. He cares. So he, he does. Yeah, that was he his does. way of showing that he cares. <laughs> He cares. So he does care about this team, though. Like, he cares about this Ranger team. And he's just like, girl, if you do that one more time, I'm leaving your ass out there. Just let, no, just let you, just letting you know he wouldn't do that to her. But it's just like, it's just funny that he said that. And like, of course, everybody's like, you know, what the heck are these things? So, of course, you know, Z is like, I right, so basically just letting you know this is what they are. They're interdimensional parasitic life forms. And, you know, basically, um, Zach and Trini kind of get into a little scuffle mm-hmm. because basically they have their own little ideas on, you know, what to do, what to do about Draken. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Draken... Yeah. Trini's like, we can't leave him with him. And, and Zach, Zach is like, why not? Let, yeah, he basically um he gets the idea of what if we if we can't well Jason suggests like maybe we can send a distress signal out to try and get some help. But then um you know maybe maybe uh retreating is the best option. And then Zach is is like, okay, so how about we retreat? We set the ship to self destruct and just let let them all go. And um, I think uh, Trini might have been, "What about Draken?" And he said, "Leave him in there," because he because uh, Zach believes that Draken is a part of this whole this whole well, invasion. Not just that, but he also believes that if the roles were reversed, 
Draken right. would have like would have been then jump ship mm-hmm. and left them to die. So he's like, well, mm-hmm. bump him too. Like Draken is a whole behind killer. Like bump him. Go ahead and let's save ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like no. And, and I was, of course, and I, yeah, I was actually on his side. With I was too. I'm not gonna lie to you. I was like, yup, you right, Zach. And then of course, Z, Z was like, you know, now I know I'm just, you know. I, I don't really know y'all like that. And I'm just, you know, you know I don't want to jump in y'all conversation. But um, I, I, the, the people that I've gotten to know, they wouldn't do nothing like that. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, they would try to fight to the very end and try to save everybody. So, mm-hmm. you know, y'all, you talking about, you know, jumping ship and leaving him. I don't think that that's something y'all would do basically in a nutshell and he was just like all right so what are we gonna do so then z basically comes up with a little plan right and he was like it's gonna require everybody's trust now jason is like you know what i haven't been a good leader so i'm gonna follow you because i don't know what the heck i'm doing Mm -hmm. so (laughs) basically Mm -hmm. they have the little idea to basically jump out and like kind of like draw their draw them draw them out kind of like get them all to you know basically come after them since they knew okay these little space vampire things are going to be after us so let's just like bring them all to bring them all outside so they basically jump out the ship and of course they come swarming you know of course (laughs) and they didn't realize that it was that many of them but you know they, Mm -hmm. they they was prepared and so, of course, you know, the uh, the leader is sitting here like, yes, they walked right into your trap. Mm-hmm. And Draken is like, of course, of course they did, you know, because they weren't mm-hmm. going to try to save me. So your children can go ahead and then drain them and drain them and drain them good, you know, go ahead and get mm-hmm. them. So, of course, the other the Omega Rangers is outside fighting and doing a thing. Jason is like, so I'm going to go ahead and, and go ahead and have them follow me. So randomly, all of a sudden, Jason's Omega Zord just pop up out of nowhere. Now, first mm-hmm. of all, I just need to know, and I don't know if you asked that question too, but I definitely asked this when I read it. Where did his Omega Zord come from? Right, right. Actually, I initially I thought that because what he at what he called for was what Omega Firepower. Mm-hmm. So I thought that he just got a battleizer. And then as I re- um, went on to the next panel, um, I saw that um, Draken said that it was his Zord. So then I was like, oh, yeah, that is his Zord. So I don't know. It looked like it just materialized. That's my like, thing. Like, yeah. It, it uh-huh. looks like maybe they're not held in a, like a Zord bay or anything like that, especially because right now they're not on like a, a planet. So they're they're just in a spaceship. So I guess their Zords just materialized. I find that very interesting, though, because we haven't, I find that we very haven't really seen that before. That I know. Yeah, of. But not no, not yeah, because like most of the time, their Zords are like held in a Zord bay mm-hmm. or something. Like they're not really something that just pops up out of nowhere, like just materialized, like teleport. Like hey, here I am. Like they mm-hmm. don't really do that, you know. So it's just kind of like it just kind of it's just kind of weird that like they. He just randomly just popped up <laughs> and it's like, hey girl, hey, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know, randomly the Omega Fire Zord just pops up and it's like, you know, boom. And so Draken is like, yo, you need to send all your mugs at this at, at that Zord, yo. Like, send them all. Mm-hmm. So of course, he's like, all my children, go and you know, go attack that machine and drain it dry. You know, so <laughs> all of them go. That that's how I think he sounds actually. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so all the little the little vampires go and they start swarming the little zord. Right? He uses Omega Fire Shield to kind of like try to like repel them off and create a little barrier around himself. But basically, they're trying to like get through, honey. Well, Zach and Trini are doing their best. They fighting, and they're like, oh, first of all. I didn't realize it was going to be this many of them. Like, it's a whole lot of these mugs out here. 
So they get in, you know, ran down, getting tired, like, oh, Lord, what we going to do? Jesus, what we going to do? And then Z pops up with, um, with I don't know what that thing called. What is he called? That big dog. The big oh, white tiger God. thing. Um, I don't know. What, I forget what that thing is called. Yale. Yale. That's what it is. I cannot. I could never remember that thing's name. Yale. He just pops up with Yale and it's like, all right, so we're going to go ahead and handle you. And of course, dude is sitting here like, oh, really? So I'm just going to go ahead and tear. I'm just going to make easy lightweight off of y'all. Like y'all, what y'all going to do? And child, I was not expecting. Now, mind you now, in the panel, you see Draken holding a whole, a whole pipe. I was mm-hmm. not expecting him to turn around and stab him. Stabbed him. <laughs> and I couldn't tell, I couldn't tell for sure that he stabbed him until um somebody had said it later on. But um, I thought he just like cracked him in the back, but he actually stabbed him with it. Dragon, I knew he stabbed him because Dragon is known for stabbing people. That's how he got Tommy. Right, right. right. <laughs> I forgot. Dragon is that. in these streets shanking the hell out of people. And I'm like, yo, I am here for all of it, honey. Dragon is like, yo, so I'm about that life. And I don't bring metal objects or sharp objects around me because I will stab you with it. And that's that. Like, it is what it is. I love it. I love it. So basically, dude is like, like you treacherous dog. We called him a dog, Jesus. He said, You mm-hmm. treacherous dog. We could have ruled the universe together. And he was like, Don't worry. I intend to. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> without you, but I intend to rule the universe. So of course, he died and all his little children die, which is interesting because it's like they're all connected. That's what I found very interesting. I'm like, hmm, they're all connected to each other. They're all like, they're all connected to like one host. But anyway, um, they all die. And everybody's like, oh, they're 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 in anguish. And then of course they, you know, realize that, you know, they're all dead. So Dragon basically was like, you know, he basically they realized that. Draken was actually feeding them information. Well, feeding Z information. And wow. that's what that they... Was the th- that was the surprise. That was the kicker. It was like, yo, Z was the one... Like, he was telling Z everything. And Z was like, all right, so this is what we're going to do. And of course, yeah. Jason was like, you know... He, he Jason, of course, being Jason, he felt some type of way about it. Right. And real quick, just like... real quick, real quick, real quick. So when we were um just going through it, that's actually when I realized that when he was coming up with that plan, it was because um Draken was feeding him all the information. I didn't get that on my first reading of it. You didn't? Wow. Mm-mm. Well, no, I, 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 well, I didn't get it either. But like, it was like a cool revelation, obviously. Because mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I mean, you mm-hmm, wouldn't have never mm-hmm. known. Like Z's yeah. plan, like how would we have known that? Like, or how he, how would Z have known that? Mm-hmm. You know, it was just right. kind of like yeah, right. Z, Z knew stuff that, like, how how did you know this stuff? You know, so it was just kind of like you can kind of tell, or not. You could after reading it again, you could tell, like mm-hmm. that's what was happening. But for sure, after the first, during the first read, we, we, you would have never known. Mm-hmm. Just like the other Rangers, and mm-hmm. you know. Jason was feeling some type of way and was like, yeah, uh, so you mean like, the, why didn't you tell, why didn't you tell us Dragon was feeding you information the whole time? And Z was like, couldn't. you wouldn't believe me. Yeah, You wouldn't believe yeah. me if yeah. I told you. Which, I mean, I agree with Z's methods. Mm-hmm. I agree with them because it's like, they already had their whole belief in 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 Draken, they already had their own feelings about him, and it's like Z knew it was like Mm-mm. if I tell y'all that Z is actually trying to help us, you would you would you wouldn't use the information, and then of course we'd be you know we'd be screwed. So I just made it like it was my plan, <laughs> and basically, and of course Jason, being the person that he is, he's like, well, I don't. I don't question your logic. I just question your ex- your execution. 
And it's just mm-hmm. like, bruh, like you basically saying the same thing, but okay. <laughs> like you basically saying the same thing. You mad because he didn't tell you what, what the tea was. Like, no, and I agree. He shouldn't have told you. Um, but of course, Zach goes and he's, you know, playing with Yale. And now he and Yale has a cute little relationship, which I'm like, oh, it's so cute. Mm-hmm. No, I'm sorry. Sidebar. Sidebar. I, I, I'm going to sound so terrible when I say this. Zach is fine in this comic. Oh, I'm I'm sorry. Yeah. Zach is fine. <laughs> I wish he, I still like I wish that they looked more like the actors. That's still kind of like it doesn't it doesn't bother me to the point of like oh I can't read it obviously that's not the case because I read them all the time but I I really wish that they looked like the actors and I still wonder why they don't when um, we've seen in like in the Boom Studios Buffy comics they look like the actors from that series honestly I don't I'm kind of glad they don't. To be honest, I, I, I'm kind of glad that they don't look like them. And I mean, the reason why I, I the reason why I'm glad is because there's so many versions of them where they do try to make them look like the actors. And to me, they be looking jank as a mug. And I'd be like, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> I don't, don't like this. Me no likey. Um, so I like the fact, and like I like I've said before, and like I've said on the show. I like the anime feel that mm-hmm. that they're given. Like honestly, to be truthfully honest, if we if we got an animated sh- series that looked almost like GoGo, mm-hmm. I would live for it. I would live. Like when I tell you, I would watch that show religiously because I just love how GoGo looks to me. Mm-hmm. Like it looks very anime ish. Um, so I mean, I I love the character designs. Uh, I always have for GoGo. Um, yeah, I, th- I think that I heard, um, and I, I like the way that um, this is probably one of my favorite art styles, the go-go look and now the, the Power Rangers look. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I remember hearing, I want to say that it was Ryan, Ryan Parrott on an interview. He mentioned that the way that they do the Rangers is they do take some inspiration from what the actors really look like, but then they also just put their own spin on it, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which is interesting. Um, Cause I don't see the, I don't, I just don't see it at all for any of these characters where they look anything like um, the, the people that we know, but eh. No, mm-hmm. they don't. I, I think honestly what they did, what they may have done, and I could definitely see this, they took the original sketches from like the er, like the first MMPR comics. Mm-hmm. They took those sketches from there and then were like, okay, so we're gonna like animate it up. Mm-hmm. So like they just took those same, they took that same art style, not so much of like, cause even like the original MMPR comics, those actually looked a lot more closer to the MMPR, to the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers actors, they looked a lot closer than Gogo does. But what it looks like Gogo did was it took those, those, um, th- that look of them and just anime styled them up to make them look more like, more like an anime than like the actual actors. So that's kind of like probably why they don't really look like the actors themselves versus like, you know, actually looking, you know, well, yeah, looking like the actors themselves, um, which I, like I said, I like. I, I personally like it that way, to be honest, because we still got, we still know who they are. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, it's it's obvious who, what Ranger is who. You mm-hmm. know, so it's not like, you know, I'm sitting here looking at this this Asian girl with long hair, and I'm like, I can't tell who that is. I know exactly <laughs> who that is. <laughs> you know, like I know who that is. So you know. That, I'm, that's what I'm like. It doesn't bother me. It, it really doesn't. But speaking of the Asian girl with long hair, Trini is walking <laughs> Draken to his cell once again. Mm. And he, he is just like, 
Girl, I done saved y'all. I saved your lives. And you still going to throw me in this doggone cage? And she is like, basically, yes. Because and he's like, why don't you trust me? She's like, basically, like, I'm not trust. The only way that I would trust you is if you risked your life to save ours. And he's like, well, I'll be dead. And she's like, that's the point. Basically, that she's was like, that's the cold. point. I'm that like, was- yeah. But- she absolutely has the right because he tried to kill them. So, oh yes, and and change the world, exactly change reality. And oh my God, speaking of that, we'll get to that in a moment. Right. So as you know, they're walking literally, like as they're walking, you know, walking away. He's like, you know, you may not want to know what goes on in my head, Trini, but you're all about to step into all of my nightmares turn real. And, child. and then we we see the reality that we saw in the last issue of Shattered Grid. So mm-hmm. it's um, Angel Grove. Well, we see the sign, Welcome to Angel Grove, home of Lord Draken. So it's that same world where he was like the Superman of the world, Rita and Zordon were his parents. Right. And how the hell did they get there? That is and that, crazy. Yeah, and then and I'm getting. Um, I guess it's because I've been watching it lately. I'm getting Wandavision vibes. <laughs> Definitely with the, with the art style. Way it looks. That's the yes. yeah, art style. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the art style. Because as soon as I saw that, I, I thought of Wandavision too. Like as soon as I saw it, I was like, wait a minute. This <laughs> little. This is like Wandavision to me. Like that is freaking crazy. This is so really like, crazy. So what the hell? Like we're in space, but now we're in an alternate reality. Like how the hell did that happen? So I guess we'll be finding that out in uh, Power Rangers number four. Right now, I do want to bring this up because, like, and and then we'll conclude this episode. But I do want to get y'all's opinion. Right now, we just got finished talking about the comic look and, and and talking about the animation style and everything. Now, just a couple of weeks ago, um, one of the uh, like a fan went ahead and created his own um kind of like a Power Rangers animated opening, kind of like well, mm-hmm. what if. Power Rangers was animated, um, which featured, you know, the main five Rangers and, you know, Rita and Rita and Larger Godar, and then basically kind of like a whole new, brand new take on the Megazord. And basically kind of being like, you know, what if Power Rangers was animated type of thing? Mm -hmm. With a look like that, do you... What do you think? Like, like, what do you think? Like, something like that would work? Like, did did that work for you? Like, like, were you like, did that kind of give you kind of like a excited kind of feel of like, what if Power Rangers was animated type of thing? Like, what was your thoughts on it? I thought it was pretty cool. Um, just the idea, because we've talked about this a bunch. How we've seen um, animated series just be so there's so much integrity in it mm-hmm. and it's not just like it's not a situation where just because this is a uh, a cartoon we're gonna like not make it good there are so many um animated series that have just excellent writing and um excellent voice acting and they they treat it seriously so we've been wanting to see power rangers treated seriously for a while and these comics that we have are such a great example of it. So if they're willing to give a series, an animated series, that type of attention, I'm all for it. This style is cool. I definitely was thinking more of an art style along the lines of what we've gotten in the comics in the last five years, but like, I'd, be, I'd be cool with this. Absolutely. Like, I, I, I agree. I agree 100%. Um, what do you think of like the anime, the animated style, like that little animation? I thought that was okay. First off, that person is extremely talented. Yeah, like last a lot, seriously, of work, a lot of effort, a lot of repetitiveness, and that was really like I don't know. I can't even imagine how much work this person put into it just to make that work. How long it took? Yeah, right. That's what I mean. Like the amount of effort, the amount of work, like, like. 
Oh my god, all of it. But I think if we did get one of those, that would be great because there could be so much more of a possibility that could happen, and the storyline could go so much farther. And we all know a lot of the time they make cartoons not for kids. So maybe mm-hmm. they'll up the storyline for this if they do make an animation of it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. like that'll be that'll be really, really cool. And it, like you said, they can explain. They could like they could do so much with it, and they can also explain oh a lot, a oh, lot yeah. with it. Like they, there's so much that they can explain, and so much that they can get away with. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they wouldn't be restricted, you know. Exactly. Like they wouldn't be re- they wouldn't be restricted with content, and they could just go balls to the walls and just do a whole bunch of stuff yep. that mm-hmm. you know the show normally wouldn't have been able to do. Um, yeah, no budget issues. Exactly, exactly. Um, and also too, I and what I also noticed that this person did, which I thought was genius, and I loved because. And you're you're probably gonna hate me for this, Will, or or, or Lena is one of y'all. But <laughs> they used the movie helmets for the, for the helmets in the on on the little animation. Like the guy drew the movie helmets instead of like oh, using the regular biomorphin helmets. I didn't notice that. I noticed it time I looked at Kimberly's. I was like, wait a minute, that's the movie helmet. And like I went back and rewatched it and saw. All of them. I was like, "Oh my God, he really used the movie helmet." I see it now. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm like, that is insane. I love it, and like, ah, oh, I was just, oh, that made me love it even more. That made me love it even more. I was like, ah, wonderful. Mwah. Chef's yeah. kiss. <laughs> love right. it. No. Love it. Amazing job. Yeah, like I, I really think that that would be amazing if they were to, you know, if they were to pull something. Like like that off like i think that'd be cool um but yeah real quick and the guy that did this um i'm so sorry if i'm butchering the last name his name is dominic estefane and he goes by dom estefane so that's d-o-m-e-s-t-e-p-h-a-n-e on instagram Yes. And also, too, you can actually go on his page and you can actually see um, a couple of his designs mm-hmm. um, that he has. And you can even see, you know, that he did use the movie helmets. Um, he has red, yellow and blue on and, there right now. Yeah, And we can assume that um, black and pink are coming very soon. It looks like he's putting them in reverse order and their morphing order. I know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, and like he's he's really talented. Like I I I'm really digging all of his art styles. Like it, he's really good. Like the guy yeah. is pretty damn good. So, yeah, follow him if you haven't or, you know, like his stuff. And, you know, and once again like do that. Do the same for us. Follow yep. us and like our stuff. <laughs> yeah, give us a like. Give us you a know? comment. Even share, subscribe, mm-hmm. follow on all of our socials, and you know we're here for you. We, we are here. here. <laughs> we love having conversations with you guys. We, we do. sure do. We we really do. <laughs> Cause like I'm I'm so serious. Like the the comments that y'all be having and like the things that y'all be the things that y'all be saying, I we be gagged. We were like, yes. <laughs> you know, so we we really do we really do appreciate y'all for real. Yeah. We really do. Well thank you. Thank you so much for always taking the time to listen to us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So once again, please like and subscribe, follow. Um, We are on Spotify. Just just as a reminder. Just as a reminder. Mm -hmm. We are on Spotify. SoundCloud. And YouTube. YouTube. We are we are all over. We are trying to be all over the place. Okay. Tribunal of the Grid is trying to be all over the place. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, follow us. Listen to us. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> and once again, <laughs> my name is Brandon. I am Lena. I'm Will. And we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.